Hi, I'm Mark Stevens, author of Adventures in Legal Land and host of the No Stay Project, the only show on the air dedicated to bringing about a voluntary society. You can hear that every Saturday afternoon from 5 to 7 p.m. Central Time and 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific Time on We the People Radio Network. That's WTPRN.com. Again, that's WTPRN.com. What I want to talk about today, civil traffic tickets, beating civil traffic tickets, getting them kicked out. Uh, the thing I want to point out, though, is all traffic courts, are not, it doesn't matter who or what, you know, who's running them, they're all scams. It has nothing to do about protection, it has nothing to do about justice, it's about separating you from your money. That's all they're there to do. And you'll find that out if you, go, if you are unfortunate enough to have to go there. You see, most people, their interaction with, with government is through traffic tickets. Uh, we all know somebody who's got a traffic ticket, nobody wants to get it, and what they do is, they set the fine low enough so that you'll just pay it. They go, oh, this isn't worth my time. I'm not going to take time off from work. It's only a couple hundred bucks. I'll just pay it. That's a mind game. They're doing this on purpose. It's part of the whole advertising and public relations of these, of these you know, comment called tra traffic courts. Uh, they want you to just pay it because if, if people, more people fought it, the whole system would collapse. Either that or before it collapsed, what they would do is they would keep lowering the fines. And they would keep lowering the fines until they, they, they got that happy medium to where people would just pay it, which is, of course, what they want. I mean, why go through the, the whole charade of a trial if you just have people send the money in? I wouldn't just pay it because as I'm going to go through here, and it's not some conspiracy theory crap, okay, then you can verify all this. Uh, you'll see that no traffic ticket has any validity whatsoever. They're all, they're just part of a scam. So it doesn't matter what they're actually accusing me of, the, the ticket has no validity whatsoever, even under their little codes. So what I talk about a lot is the issue of standing. because, And this is just one of many ways of showing that a traffic ticket has no validity. Uh, but it's a big one. It's a very important one. If I can show that the ticket, that the plaintiff has no standing to complain against me, well then the court has no subject matter jurisdiction and the case has to be thrown out. So it doesn't matter what I'm being actually accused of if they can't show standing. So this is why I press this issue so much. It's a very big issue. Again, it's only one of many issues to show that traffic tickets are just part of a larger scam uh, and that they have no validity whatsoever. So one of the things I want to point out that if you learn anything from the video is that a ticket, let's say a ticket, is not synonymous with a, uh, with, with a cause of action. See, uh, they want you to believe that a cause of action and a ticket are exactly the same thing because then they've already won, they've got you here. Because, well, you know, most people just assume, well, there's a valid cause of action here, I'll just pay it, or it's not worth my time, I pay it. But boy, you open up a whole can of worms now when you start questioning whether the complaint you know, presents a valid cause of action. And a cause of action is a very specific thing, legally. In fact, any attorney will tell you that. Uh, they don't want you to discuss that. The, the, the one thing that judges and, and prosecutors, and, and especially the police, they don't want you talking about cause of action or standing. And they'll even let you think that doesn't even apply. We'll show you that it does. So do, do, before we get into the issue of standing, to determine how somebody gets standing in an American court, you have to know what the court is for. I mean, why do we have courts? Why do we have government? Now, I know this is all public relations, but this just goes to show that the ticket has no validity, even under their little code. Uh, you find the purpose of government in the Declaration of Independence in most state constitutions. In Arizona, for example, it's Article 2, Section 2, and it states that governments are established to protect and maintain individual rights. Okay, now, stop laughing. Uh, so it's that governments are established to protect and maintain individual rights. So this is why we have the government. Now, we know courts are part of the government, so the purpose of the court is to protect and maintain individual rights, of course. So what is the court's jurisdiction? Well, the court's jurisdiction is limited, of course, to its purpose. The purpose is to protect and maintain individual rights, so the jurisdiction of any court is going to be limited to the protection and maintenance of individual rights. That's basic common sense. So then for a plaintiff to have standing in that same court, in an American court, the plaintiff has to allege the violation of a legal right because the court's jurisdiction is based on protecting and maintaining individual rights. So to have standing, they have to allege that. And you can go into any number of court cases. They're consistent, believe it or not, with this. Of course, they don't like to hear this in a traffic court. Uh, 
Rames vs. Bird. Standing is a necessary component of subject matter jurisdiction. Well, you have to have subject matter jurisdiction even in a traffic case. Uh, it states that standing is perhaps the most important of the jurisdictional doctrines. Standing represents a jurisdictional requirement which remains open to review at all stages of the litigation. And in the uh, Supreme Court of the United States, again, Allen v. Wright, this is where you get into the, you know, the elements of standing. The requirement of standing, however, has a core component derived directly from the Constitution. A plaintiff must allege personal injury fairly traceable to the defendant's allegedly unlawful conduct and likely to be redressed by the request of relief. So you have to have the injury, which is the invasion of a legal right. So we know that they're claiming that it's a civil traffic ticket. Let's say I didn't have a seatbelt on and they filed a civil action against me. Well, do they allege the violation of a, le of a legal right? Is there any injury? Uh, say, it says, again, I'm gonna, they must allege personal injury. Well, was the police officer alleging personal injury? Does the prosecutor allege personal injury of the so-called plaintiff? No. So now if the courts, now this is subject matter jurisdiction, so for a plaintiff to have standing, they have to allege the violation of a legal right. Once they do that, then the court can have subject matter jurisdiction, but here we see there is no violation of legal right, so there couldn't be any subject matter jurisdiction because the court is limited, and the purpose of the court is to what? That's right, to protect and maintain individual rights. So you see right off the bat, no, no driver's license or uh, no seatbelt or, go, you know, or even speeding, not that I'm advocating people traveling in, on, you know, at a speed that's not reasonable and prudent, but 5, 10, 12 miles an hour over the speed limit probably isn't you know, really endangering anybody. So you see that there's no validity whatsoever to any of those tickets. And that's on just this one issue alone. And if you think that this isn't a serious issue, that the uh, government attorneys don't take this seriously, you can just look at a recent case where the NSA was sued by, I believe it was the ACLU. And that was the main issue that they raised, that they hadn't, they hadn't shown standing. They couldn't show a personal injury. Well, that apply, well, okay, well, standing applies across the board, even to civil traffic cases, because we know that the government was established to what? Protect and maintain individual rights. So that's what the jurisdiction is limited to. So there is a very, uh, it's been a very effective way, and it shows you that no traffic ticket has any validity whatsoever. So in the next video, what we'll discuss is how to impeach a witness, which is typically in a traffic case, you only have one witness, it's the police officer. And I can go through how you can impeach him by asking only two questions. In some cases, you ask him even one question, <laughs> and the judge would be more than happy to say he's incompetent to testify. But that's in the next video. Until then, I'm Mark Stevens. Go to my website. It's adventuresinlegalland.com.